we're going to start making these crease lines here. We're also going to make this little indent that goes behind this door. And then we'll make these little black uh, pieces that go here. So let's go back to our Blender file here. And let's tab into edit mode, switch to vertex select. So we're going to need another set of vertices here so we can make this part that goes in. So what we're going to do is do control R, left click, right click. I'm going to select this vertex, G twice, bring it up. Bring it up a bit higher than this vertex. You can also select this one, G twice, and slide it up to make a smoother transition between here and here. Then what we want to do is select this vertex, hold control, select the middle vertex so you get all these. We're going to do E to extrude, right click to cancel, bring them back on the Y axis a bit. Try to match the distance right here. Then we're going to take this center vertex, we're going to do E to extrude, right click to cancel. And we're going to bring it down a little. We actually want to hide this back door to make it easier. So we're just going to select one of these vertices, do control L, H to hide that. And we want to take this vertex and grab it on the Z axis, hold control and snap it to this one. So it has the same Z value. Then we're going to alt right click. Shift and right click, so we select all these, press F to make a face, I and then B to do an inset with the border option, do a small inset, and that'll get our primary part here. You do notice we have some shading issues now, that just means we have to add in a surrounding edge loop to contain the bad shading, so we're going to do K for the knife cut tool, and... We're going to do K for the knife cut tool. We're going to left click here, drag this over, left click here, drag this over again, left click, drag it down, left click. I'm going to zoom out and move my view down a bit so I can get this last cut and then go all the way down to the bottom, left click and then press enter. So you should now have an edge loop that runs around like this. These vertices we can get rid of, so we can select all three of these, Alt-M at center, and then drag this up slightly. Then we can do Alt-Right-Click, Q, then E, then F, or just Q, then E if you need to. Bring these a bit closer. I actually want to deselect this one, so I'm going to right-click to cancel that. Deselect that one, Q, then E, then F, and bring this in. This edge loop just didn't work very well when I tried to move all of it together, so I'm just going to move it separately. So we're going to do Alt right click, deselect this one again because it gives us problems, then Q, then E, try to match the distance. But for whatever reason, this one really doesn't work properly, so you're just going to have to do some manual adjustments by just doing Q. So I just selected these two and did Q to try to match the distance here. And then do G twice on this one to try to keep a consistent distance here. These I think I want to move a bit further back so I'm going to select these here, do Q and just slide them out a little bit or slide them up a bit until it has a similar distance to that. So now you get some better shading in this area. Looks a lot nicer. So we're going to create these crease lines. So we want to select all the edges that run along the crease lines. And then we're going to do a bevel. We're going to do some insets and stuff like that to make these crease lines. We're also going to try to make this part that goes back a bit. So in edit mode we're going to select this vertex. This is the one just below the window. So this is the window area. And then we created 
So this is the window area. And then we created that other line just below it for this crease line. So this is the line just below it for the crease line. And then it goes all the way over to the edge of the light. So we want to select all the vertices all the way over to the edge of the light. So we're going to do control, right click. This is where the edge of the light would be, is right here. You can check by doing control 1 for back view and Z for wireframe to see that this is the edge of the light. And then you can just do control and right click. And then we just need that one last vertex at the bottom of this line, which I believe is down here. So just hold shift and select this vertex. And that should get the whole straight line right here. We also need the ones that go across, over, and then down. You can see it better on this one that it's actually creased in this area. Or it's, uh, it's got that inset to it. So we do need to select those as well. So we need to go across the light. If you want to do it in side view and Z for wireframe, you can even see where the vertices are. So you're just going to hold shift and select these vertices that are supposed to be part of the light. This one here is not part of it, it's part of that uh, the bumper. So you just want to select all those. Once you have all those, you can do Control-B. Hold Shift if you want to make a smaller adjustments. And do a fairly small bevel. Maybe like that's going to be fine. And then what we want to do is I to inset, B for border. Bring it all the way out till it's touching the other vertices so you don't see any movement when you move this. Then hold shift and just slowly come closer until you do a small inset. And then left click. So you should have a really small inset. You could even do control Z and make a smaller one if you want. Just do the same process. Once you have that inset, you're going to do E to extrude, right click to cancel. And you're just going to do Alt S and bring it in slightly. So now you can start to see you're getting that creasing look. So it looks nice, looks good. If you want to, you can do another inset. So you can do I, then B. Go all the way out, hold shift, start bringing it back slowly until it does a very small inset on the inside again. And you may like the shading better with that, or you may not like it not as much. It's up to you. If you like this better, you can leave it like this. Or you can do Control-Z and go back to this one. Not sure which one I like better. Maybe this one looks a little better. It looks better in the top area like this, but I'm not sure about this other area. So it's up to you what you want to do. And I may have made my bevel a little too big. So you can always go back and change that. So in order to create these, it's pretty simple. It's just a circle. So we're going to tab into edit mode. Left click on the back of the bus, then left click over here, do create, circle, change the vertex count to 6, press enter, RX 90, press enter, S to scale it down, bring it into position on the X axis, bring it into the position on the Y axis, and Z axis, scale it down some, bring it over some. We're going to want it snapped on the Y axis to this point. So we're just going to grab it on the Y axis, hold control, and snap to one of these vertices right here. So you can just grab it on the Y, hold control, snap it there, bring it over. S to scale it down. If you wanted, you can do control 1 for back view, Z for wireframe. Take a look at where this is positioned. So it's basically where the third light is, probably about halfway. 
So bring it down to where the third light is, about halfway, scale it down a little if you want, whatever you feel is appropriate. I may want to scale mine down a little bit more, maybe bring it over slightly. And then you're just going to do E to extrude, right click to cancel, Alt M at center. And then you're going to drag the center point out a bit. Then you're going to do select length, control N to recalculate the normals, tab into edit mode. You'll notice it's not, doesn't have smooth shading. So right click on the boss, click on tools, turn on smooth shading. And there you go. You've got your little, little dot there, whatever it is. If you want to make another one, so like there's another one up here and it's about halfway on this part here. So do Shift D, right click to cancel, bring it up. Three for side view, Z for wireframe. So it's about halfway here. Just bring it approximately halfway here. And there you go, you got your other one. Tab to edit mode, right click to select one of these vertices, Control L. Shift D to duplicate, right click to cancel, bring it over. Because there's another one. It's another one right here. This one's a little bit different, but I'm just going to leave it the same for now because it would be higher poly if I try to make exactly what this is. There actually is not one on the left, but there is one on the right. But since we have a mirror, it's going to put one on the left anyway. We can delete the left one later once we apply the mirror modifier. So we're just going to position this one correctly now. And later, if we want to, we can delete the one on the left. So it's a little bit in, not too far in. Just go back to your model. And if you want, you can do Alt H to unhide all these other parts. Do A to deselect. Select this. Do Control L. Control 1 for back view. Z for wireframe. It's actually not going to be very easy to see in back view. So just do it in whatever view you feel like and try to position it appropriately. So that looks good, I guess. Remember that we can delete this one later. And we're just going to hide the rest of this again. So we're going to Alt right click, Alt and Shift right click, H to hide, hover your mouse over this, press L, then H to hide. So now we're back to where we were as far as what's hidden and what's not. And we now have our new crease lines. If you want to, like I said, make them smaller than this. I may make them smaller because it looks like there's too much space right here. So what actually what we may be able to do on this one, since this one looks like it's really the only one that's probably got too much space to it, is we could just do tab for edit mode, select one of these vertices, period, to focus in. Z for wireframe, C for circle select, and get all these that are in this area. And just drag them up a bit to make it a little smaller. And that'll help make it look closer to the rest of it. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. It looks like it's all looking, all looking good. So we can save it, just go to File and Save. One thing I did notice is that if we press Tab and go down here, I notice that this little edge is sticking out or this vertex is sticking out. So just right click on it and bring it back slightly on the x-axis and that'll fix that. The other thing we didn't do yet is uh, position these backwards a bit. So if you want to just Tab and edit mode, Z for wireframe. And you can even do control one for back view to make sure that you're selecting the correct vertices and number pad period to focus in on this. So you have this one selected, do C for circle select and get these. Then go towards the center and continue using C for circle select to get all these. So we want to bring it back similar to how this is brought back and it's only the bottom ones like the top ones get left right where they are so we get the bottom ones selected already so all we have to do is just bring them back a little bit and we'll start to get 
that look that we want where it goes back slightly at this point. So that looks fine, so we're just going to save it, just go to File, Save. 